Alright, so here we are with the four nine notes on isosceles and equilateral triangles. So it's going to be a little bit more um, clarification on both of these types of triangles. So, um, just so that we know, isosceles triangles is pretty much the word that I can never remember what to say. Along with compass and protractor, I mix those up a lot too. Um, so, if I pause a little bit, it's probably because I'm trying to think of the word isosceles. It's a thing. Okay. So we're going to prove theorems about isosceles and equilateral triangles, and we're going to apply properties of them as well. So uh, most of these, again, we've kind of talked a bit about, or at least um, hopefully they will be something that you can kind of uh, relate to. So legs in an isosceles triangle, we're going to talk about those, the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, uh, a base, and then also base angles. So very helpful here. So we're going to recall that an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. Um, generally, we just use two congruent sides, but technically an equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle. It's just super fancy. It's kind of like a rectangle is a square. It's just super fancy. Okay. Sorry. A square is a rectangle. Just super fancy. Okay. All right. Uh, the congruent sides are called the legs. So... As we look at this isosceles triangle, uh, this here is our set of legs, and those legs are the two pieces that are going to be the same. Uh, vertex angle here, notice it's at angle 3, so that's up here. And then we also have things called base angles. So these base angles are down here, and technically they're across from the legs that are congruent. Uh, generally when I draw an isosceles triangle, I'll draw it where um, the vertex is kind of on the top. But of course you can rotate a, a triangle any way you need, and so we do need to be able to kind of get there from that. So those are our base angles. Now that we know a little bit about each of these pieces, we can then go into some specifics. So for instance, we know that angle B and C, the base angles, are congruent. So that's very helpful. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that these sides are congruent, and so the only way to get a triangle that has two sides that are the same length is to end up with two angles at the bottom that are also the same measure. Um, so it's kind of that idea of forcing a triangle to um, have those terms. Then we have the converse, um, and remember that the converse is just kind of the opposite or the flip. So now they're saying, oh, guess what? We have angles, and so that leads to the sides, okay? So the sides are congruent if the angles are given as congruent, so. And those sides we call legs. All right, so there's also a corollary, and um, so remember that corollaries are kind of easily found from theorems. So this is corollary 483, which is really not a helpful number, but uh, basically it says that if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. And so we've kind of alluded to this, but basically if you have three of the same side to make a triangle, you have to have three of the same angle. Otherwise, it literally won't make a triangle. It'll be some weird, empty, open-sided shape. So, again, equilateral triangles are interchangeable with equiangular, so it's very helpful. So anytime that a, um, it's helpful because pretty much, in my mind, they're the same word anyway. <laughs> but notice that one of them says angular and one says lateral, which would mean side versus um, angle. So either way, equiangular is equilateral and vice versa. So that's our corollary there. All right, um, let's see. Same thing is happening here. Notice that if you have equiangular, you have equilateral. So it, this is just the converse of the previous page. And so they're saying, hey, if you have angles, it leads to sides, versus the previous say, s slide said that if you have sides, you have angles. So either way, interchangeable. Good to know. So we'll go ahead and answer some questions about this, and so we're going to find each angle measure. I can see in here that this is an isosceles triangle, right? We've got two legs that are the same length, and because of those two legs being the same length, we in fact have two angles that are the same. And same, of course, means equal, so we can set those two angles equal 
in order to find the value of x. Once we find the value of x, we can plug it back in and find one of those base angles, angle r. So putting these together, we will move our x's with our x's, and our numbers with our numbers. Divide by our multiplier, and we end up with an x of 9. That's not an angle measure, but it can be then put in for the x. So 5 times 9 is 45. Minus 17 is 28. So apparently 28 degrees for measure of angle r. Uh, they do want you to go a step further and find the vertex angle. So to find the vertex angle, we would take 180 for the entire triangle minus 28 for the base angle, and then another 28 for the base angle. And if we do that, we end up with an angle of 124. Degrees. So, that is our answer for that isosceles triangle. Alright, then we have an equilateral triangle, at least right here in number 3. So number three, they're telling us that this angle is 4x minus 20, and guess what? Oh my gosh, that means every single one of these angles is that. Which means that we, if we have 4x plus 20 for one of the angles, but then times three, because there are three of them, that should equal 180 degrees inside of a triangle. So, many ways to solve this, but I think the fastest would be divide everything by 3 first, not to mention we know that every angle is already 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle. So, alas. Alright. Then we're going to add 20, and we get 4x equals 80. Divide by that 4, and we get 20 for the x, which is what they want. So, x is 20. Woohoo! Uh, this next one here, uh, y we're trying to find, and oh my gosh, there are fractions, but I think we'll make it. Uh, notice here that they don't have tick marks for the side lengths, uh, but they do have tick marks for the angles. So this is an equiangular triangle, which is also then an equilateral triangle. And so we can, in fact, set 2 thirds y minus 3 equal to 7 thirds y minus 13. Don't let the fractions scare you. We'll just go ahead and take the smaller fraction. Subtract it from the larger fraction, and we're left with negative 3 equals 5 thirds y. Add a 13 to both sides, and we get 10, and multiply by the reciprocal of 5 thirds, which is 3 fifths, and we get 6. Ooh, that is a nice easy number. Alright, and then the last one is kind of a little puzzle. Love it. Okay. So, how do we get there? Let's see. The first thing they give us is an isosceles triangle. So, if this is 52, then this is also 52. Uh, for fun, we can get that angle at top, but I don't think we need to. Because that's 52 with a line, this is then 180 minus 52 to get that angle measured there. So what is that? 128. And then since that's 128, and these two angles have to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle, that means that we take 180 minus 128, and that's what's left over for the two bases. And then if 52 is what's left over, we have to divide it by 2 to give it into both of those bases. So 26 is our angle measure for each of these. So x is 26. Kind of a little puzzle. Super. All right, and then the last one. The vertex angle of an isosceles triangle measures a plus 5. Super isosceles triangle. a plus 15, sorry, for the angle up there. And one of the base angles measures 7a. Super. We need to find a. Mm. <clears throat> so, since it said one of the base angles, and it's an isosceles triangle, the other one is 7a as well. Has to happen. 
So if we take each of these angles, which is a plus 15, and 7a, and 7a, those should all equal the entire triangle of 180 degrees. Altogether, we have 1a, 7a, and 7a, so we technically have 15 a's. And so we can go ahead and solve for a and get 165 divided by 15, and we get 11. Ooh. Okay, so if A is 11, that's the first thing, but then they also want each angle measure. So 7 times 11 is going to make this angle measure 77 degrees. This one is also 77 degrees. And so I kind of drew this weird, but either way, this one then is 26 degrees. There we go. Because 11 plus 15 is 26. All right, so that's the end of those notes, and so hopefully we have a little bit more of a, a grasp on isosceles triangles with their base angles and such, and then also equilateral slash equiangular triangles and how they are the same.